Hello, I'm Jerry Romine, the Entrepreneur Abroad, and in this video, I'm going to go over the top 10 oil stocks, and you're going to want to stay to the very end to watch the side-by-side -side analysis, and especially for my top picks, because they're not what you're expecting. Oil prices have already bounced back from the pandemic lows, and with the world economies now opening up, this could be the best time ever to invest in the oil stocks. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, and this video is for entertainment purposes only, so grab yourself a cup of coffee and hang on, because this is not your normal stock channel. The oil stocks are not out of the woods yet. The price of Brent crude is selling for approximately $35 a barrel, which is still too cheap for some companies to be able to be profitable in the U.S. Make no mistake, some companies are still fighting for their very survival. But aren't the best opportunities often in times of turmoil? So let's take a real hard look at the oil stocks today. Here are six signs that the oil demand is recovering. Number one, China's oil demand is already back to pre-pandemic levels. Number two, India's fuel demand is rapidly increasing. Number three, oil prices are surging. Check out this photo and you can see that oil futures have come a long way since being negative one month ago. Number four, Saudi Arabia and Russia have ended their price war. Number five, institutional demand is increasing worldwide. And number six, consumer demand is rapidly increasing worldwide as the economies come out of being on lockdown. I'm personally very bullish on oil for the long term, but I want to caution everyone that oil is definitely high risk, volatile, and it's not for everyone. And there are still two things that could keep oil prices from rising. Number one, several of the oil nations are dependent on oil sales, and it's quite possible that there could be another oil price war. Number two, if there's a round two of the worldwide illness, we could go back into lockdown, and that would definitely hurt oil and oil prices. Let's jump over and look at a bullish news article. Article. All right, here's a positive article on oil, why we think oil will cross $100 a barrel next year. Summary, the current setup is preparing for a large undersupply of oil starting third quarter 2020 going into 2021. That alone sets up for a rapid recovery in prices. That will combine well with increased institutional demand to lead to large increase in oil demand and prices. We expect crude oil prices to spike above $100 a barrel in late 2021 as consistent undersupply balances with strong demand. This video is going to be fast paced with a lot of fundamental data. If you're new to my channel, please check out the video, How to Analyze Stocks, because it's the foundation for all of my videos and it's really going to help you understand everything we go over today, plus a lot of the data that I don't go over individually in today's presentation. You're going to see that I put a lot of time, work, and effort into my videos, and if you appreciate them and want to see more, then all I ask is for a like and subscribe to keep this channel growing. Hello, and welcome to today's Beast Mode Stock Analysis. Today we're going over the oil stocks, and I think we've got some really undervalued stocks today. So let's start with our stock tickers. XOM is ExxonMobil, CDX is Chevron, RDS is Royal Dutch Shell, TOT is Total, BP, British Petroleum, COP, ConocoPhillips, EPD, Enterprise Products, KMI, Kinder Morgan Incorporated, PSX, Phillips 66, and IMO is Imperial Oil. The first thing that we notice is that these stocks are some of the few in the currently overvalued market that are still trading at a significant discount from their 52-week high. The earnings, income, and growth, this tells us whether or not the companies are making money, and our first stop today is going to be the EPS, the earnings per share, and we can see that British Petroleum is not currently making money, so we're going to go ahead and put a checkbox on them because we're not interested. And then we're going to go look at the P.E. ratio, and ideally we want to have a P.E. ratio that is below 20, and any of these ones that are coming in on the high side, like Chevron, we will go ahead and rule them out, as well as Phillips 66. The nice thing about Beast Mode is I have it color coded. So anything in blue is really important to me. Anything in green is of second level importance and anything in tan is of the third level of importance. And the nice thing about the Beast Mode is things automatically have a way of working themselves out. Let's look at the net income margin and here we want the highest number possible. And anytime we've got an up arrow, that's just a shortcut indicator for me saying we want a high number, a down arrow, meaning we want a low number. So when we go across looking at the net income margin, we can see two things that are really standing out here. We've got EPD coming in at 14.75%. We've got ConocoPhillips coming in at 11.9%. And we've got Kinder Morgan coming in at 10.31%. And what we can also see is BP has already been ruled out because they have a negative income margin. The total shareholder yield is a nice one to look at. And this is a three ways management of a public company can distribute cash to shareholders. And that's with cash dividends, stock repurchases, and debt reduction. And here we can see our best one coming in is IMO, Imperial Oil, at 23.67%. And then we've got uh, ConocoPhillips at 18.15% and Shell coming in, coming in at 16.60%. 
Another one I like to look at is the return on invested capital. And here we're looking for the highest number possible. And our best ones here are ConocoPhillips, EPD, and Phillips 66, which has already been ruled out. For dividends, I've always considered dividends to be a bonus when investing in a good company. And in the oil stocks, a lot of them pay dividends. And I always like to look at the dividend yield and I want that to be 4% or higher. And you can see all but one of them are coming in above 4%. And even the one that's not uh, ConocoPhillips, they're right at 3.94%. So that's good enough anyway. So that's just a nice bonus on all of these stocks. As a long-term value investor, financials are really important. And we want to know whether or not the companies run on good margin. So the cost of goods margin, we want the lowest number possible here. And what's really standing out is Kinder Morgan at 43.4%. And then we also have ConocoPhillips at 52.8%. 8% and Chevron is 56.1%. Everybody else is coming in considerably higher. So all of a sudden, uh, Kinder Morgan is starting to look pretty good. Then we've got the operating margin. And this is a fun one to look at. An operating margin measures how much profit a company makes on a dollar of sales after paying for variable costs of production, such as wages and raw materials, but before paying interest or taxes. It's calculated by dividing the company's operating profit by its net sales. And the S&P 500 average is 10.8%. So anything above 10.8% we consider to be good. And what do you know? Some companies are really starting to stand out. We've got Kinder Morgan at 29.9%. We've got ConocoPhillips at 19.4%. And we've got Enterprise Products at 17.2%. Then when we look at some of the big names like ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Shell, all of them are coming in much lower, which is a little bit of a surprise. And even BP, I mean, BP is really hurting at 0.8%. So do you see how the nice thing about the beast mode is the cream rises to the top pretty quickly as we go through this? I think it's really cool. The balance sheet is very important because it tells us whether or not a company is financially stable. The oil, cruise, and airline industries, they're all hurting and their revenues have been hit very hard. So this is a very important metric to look at for them. And the current one-year excess, this tells us if the company could survive if it had zero revenue for the next year. And what we're seeing here is that Exxon and KMI would struggle a little bit. Now that doesn't mean they don't have assets they could sell off to come up with the cash, but it means they're not in a cash rich position. So let's look at the definition of the cash assets versus the cash liabilities. And the CACL ratio shows the company's total current one year excess relative to the company's assets and liabilities. Under one is bad. It means they cannot survive one year without income. Over two is ideal. So when we look at this number, only one is coming in at over two, and that's ConocoPhillips. And then we have ExxonMobil and KMI that's definitely in the red on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate these guys and give them a nice little check mark. Our next stop is the short-term cash ratio, and this is used to assess a company's short-term liquidity. The cash ratio formula is the most conservative form of a company's liquidity ratio, and is calculated by dividing the cash by cash equivalents of the company by the current liabilities and signifies the company's ability to pay short-term liabilities with its high liquid assets. And what do you know? We've got one company that is coming in exceptionally strong here and ConocoPhillips is really starting to stand out from everybody else. And one of my favorite things to look at on the balance sheet is the total assets versus total liabilities. And we call that the tattle ratio because it tattles on the company's overall financial strength. And here, ideally, we like to see a number coming in at two or higher. And the nice thing about all of the oil stocks is they're coming in pretty strong. Let's see, the weakest one is at 1.49 and many of them are over two. So this is definitely a strength for the oils. They're going to be able to survive. They might have some tough times, but I don't expect any of these big guys to go under. For our debt ratios, we've got a couple ways we can look at them. One is a traditional debt equity ratio, and the other one is a new metric I'm using called the net debt EBI TDA ratio. And if you missed the definition, you can go back in yesterday's video. I went over that in a little more detail, but we can see two companies are standing out here on the debt ratios, ConocoPhillips and Imperial Oil. And at this point, that pretty much wraps up our phase one financial analysis on all of the companies. And at this point, we'd like to see who's left standing. And so far out of 10, we've been able to narrow the field down to just five. Now we're moving into phase two of beast mode stock analysis. And this is where we get into the valuations, price targets, and analyst sentiment. And everything here is subjective. The first thing I notice is the Peter Lynch fair value estimator. And I've modified my formula a little bit. And I want to be clear, the Peter Lynch formula does not work on everything. But when it does pop a signal, it's something that I like to pay attention to. And remember how I said the beast mode has a way of working itself out? This is where it gets really cool when you start to recognize the little things and the details for beast mode. On the Peter Lynch estimator, for overvalued, we've got XOM, they've been ruled out. We've got CVX, they've been ruled out. We've got Shell, they're near value, so that triggers as good news for me. We've got Total, 
They're near value. That triggers is good news for me. BP, they've been ruled out. They're overvalued. ConocoPhillips, they're undervalued. EPD is near value. KMI is overvalued. They've been ruled out. PSX, Phillips 66, they've been ruled out, negative EPS, and IMO, their popping is overvalued. So out of these five, we actually got a decent, the Peter Lynch fair value estimator signal on four of them. I think that's pretty cool. For the fair value intrinsic estimator, this generally returns conservative estimates, and I always like to check here, and whenever possible, I want to be able to buy below the intrinsic value. So for Exxon, we've got a current stock price of $43.94, and we've got an estimated intrinsic value of $57.06. So if this wasn't ruled out, that would have been something in their favor. So let's look at Shell. They're currently trading at $30.22. It's below the estimated intrinsic value. Total at $35.35 is below the estimated intrinsic value. ConocoPhillips at $42.67 is below the estimated intrinsic value. EPD at $18.48 below intrinsic and IMO at 15 is trading below its intrinsic value. So all of that is good news. The fair value intrinsic upside estimate, and here the higher the number the better, and we can see where all of these are coming in and you can draw your own conclusions. Next we want to look at the beta ratio, and this deals with volatility. And a beta that is greater than 1.0 indicates that the securities price is theoretically more volatile than the market. For example, if a stock's beta is 1.2, it's assumed to be 20% more volatile than the market. So we can see that the oil stocks are more volatile than the market. No surprise. The higher the number, the more volatile. And one surprise here is that enterprise is actually coming in at 0.81. So that's a real pleasant surprise for us. Our next stop is the analyst recommendations. And I always like to take a quick look to see who they're recommending. And hopefully we're in agreement. So here we can see that two of the ones that have the most recommendations are the two that are looking good for us today, which is ConocoPhillips and Enterprise. For the analyst price targets, I always like to look at the mean price because I want to stay conservative. And you can compare all of these numbers. But all of our ones in yellow, they are all coming in where we can buy them below the analyst target mean price. And that's a good sign. And if you've been with me for many of the other analyses, you'll know that we've been having a real tough time finding stocks that were not overvalued. Well, the nice thing here is all of these stocks have been beaten down so much. This is actually one of the few segments where we can still find undervalued deals. Of course, it's higher risk and higher volatility, but at least they're not all overvalued. For value investors like Warren Buffett, the book value per share is a very important metric. And here we've got two things that are popping. We've got total, which has a book value ratio of 1.23. And we have IMO that's got a book value ratio of 2.14, which is incredible. So for IMO, it's currently trading at $15. And the book value per share is $32.11. That's like, wow, you have my attention. I am interested. And for total, they're looking pretty good as well. The current stock price is $35.35, and the book value per share is $43.53. So one way of looking at the book value is if you were able to just simply come in and buy the company and all of their assets, and then you sold off their assets, if the book value is higher than the current stock price, you would actually make money. And that's why this is such a key undervalued metric that we have. And again, Total and IMO are coming in with a beautiful book value, and that definitely is something we should be interested in. And our last stop today is the Piotrowski score, and this helps to find companies with a healthy liquid balance sheet, profitability, and operating efficiency. And ideally, we want to have a number that comes in at five or above. And for all of our choices that are still in the running in yellow, they're all coming in at five. If you enjoyed this video and all the time, work, and effort I put into it, then all I ask is for a like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I'm also frequently asked if I share my spreadsheet, and I don't because it has so much custom programming that can be broken. All right, let's get on with today's pick. Number one is ConocoPhillips. They have a net income margin of 12%, a return on invested capital of 9%, a cash ratio of 1.3, which is impressive, and they are currently trading below the intrinsic value. Number two is Enterprise Products, ticker EPD. They have an impressive net income margin of 15%, a dividend yield of 9.6%, and they are trading below the intrinsic value. Number three is Total, with a ticker of TOT. They are currently trading below their book value. They have an impressive 7% dividend yield and you can buy them below the intrinsic value. And number four is Imperial Oil, and they are trading below their book value, and it is an absolute steal. They have a shareholder yield of 24%. They have a very low debt ratio, and you can buy them below the intrinsic value. I really expected the big names like Shell, Exxon, and BP to look better on paper, but that simply wasn't the case today. The good news is all of these oil stocks are asset rich, and they've got a really good tattle ratio, and I expect them to be here for the long term. As oil prices increase, a rising tide should rise all of the oil stocks in value.
Again, I want to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment purposes only. I always encourage you to do your own research and to draw your own conclusions. I hope that you really enjoyed today's video. And if you've not already taken advantage of Webull's offer to get two free stocks valued at up to $1,400, the link is in the description below and I encourage you to take action today. If you have not already, make sure you sign up for Webull to get a free stock worth up to $1,400. Webull is much more than a free stock trading app. And I have a free tutorial video on Webull that's so good, Webull actually called me after viewing it. Both the promo and Webull tutorial link are in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Be sure to give me some YouTube love and drop a comment below. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.